Birmingham, United Kingdom. It's home to one of Britain's largest Muslim populations. And it's communities like this where the government has focused its counterterrorism efforts in recent years. Part of the strategy is the Prevent Program. Created in the wake of the July 2005 London bombings, Prevent seeks to put an end to radicalization and extremism by engaging the Muslim community. However, many Muslims have lost faith in the program, which they consider to be nothing more than a surveillance project in which they are being unfairly targeted. In a predominantly Muslim neighborhood of Birmingham, an after-school program for young people has been given a second chance thanks to support from Prevent. My name is PC Mohammed Najib. I work with the West Midlands Counterterrorism Unit and I work specifically for the Prevent Department. My main aim is to steer kids away from uh, po being possibly being radicalized. Now, working closely with the communities uh, is uh, one of the positive is once the community members realize there is a person that's possibly in danger of being radicalized, they can approach me and then we can address that issue. Prevent is all about helping people, not criminalizing people or arresting them. The only people that have uh, to fear something if they've got obviously something to hide. But that's the kind of thinking that has caused concern among the Muslim community here. Well, the cameras would have been in a typical scenario. They would have been erected on top of some of the lampposts, some in covert places as well. Resentment over the government's counterterrorism program intensified in 2010, when authorities installed hundreds of surveillance cameras in predominantly Muslim areas of Birmingham. However, they were quickly removed after widespread criticism. Jahan Mahmoud, a Birmingham-based historian and former advisor to the government's counterterrorism unit, was one of those to criticize the project, which he said led to a breakdown of trust between Muslims and the government. Any astute terrorist or extremist could quite easily move out of this area into another area, rendering an entire population to surveillance. And that's not how you deal with issues pertaining to radicalization or extremism. You build trust, and the police didn't do that. Recently, public concern again increased over a new prevent training being offered to civil servants on how to identify potential extremists and report them to the authorities. Al Jazeera heard from medical professionals, educators, firefighters, and others in the public sector who have recently taken part in the training. Most were reluctant to discuss it on camera. However, a nurse with the National Health Service agreed on condition that we disguise her voice and not use her name. As part of the training, uh, we were uh, told to look out for specific characteristics of someone who might be vulnerable to radicalization. Al Jazeera obtained copies of documents from the training that listed potential extremist behaviors that medical staff should look out for, including disagreement with UK government policy and its counterterrorism program. The healthcare worker's job is to ultimately treat your patient. Um, it doesn't matter what they walk in the door with. Um, you as a healthcare professional within whichever speciality you work, you've been trained to um, help support them. I don't understand why the counterterrorism unit is actually offering um, training to healthcare professionals to spot terrorists because um, that's not even part of our remit, it's not part of our job description, it's actually something that the police should be doing. Um, so offering this training, it's almost as if we're becoming government informants. I asked Sir Peter Fahi, Chief Constable of Greater Manchester and Head of Prevent's National Police Force, about the training being offered to NHS staff. If there are health professionals who have serious concerns that the person they're dealing with um, you know, is getting involved in extremist activity and that is harming their well-being and harming the community, then yes, absolutely, it's about them being able to raise those concerns. Is PREVENT a surveillance program? Well, it, you know, I know some people think it's a surveillance program. We would say it is absolutely not. You know, we have different surveillance programs when there are serious, you know, concerns, when there is evidence, when there is intelligence, clearly about somebody actively involved in terrorism. Prevent is about involving the community, different institutions, different organisations, and absolutely looking out for signs that people may be being drawn into violent extremism. Prevent sees young Muslims as the most vulnerable to radicalization. Zahed, 
A student and head of the Islamic Society at the University of Birmingham said that the threat of extremism isn't as serious as the government claims. I think it's, uh, it's an exaggerated idea. Yeah, there are probably are Muslims who do hold some extremist uh, ideologies, no doubt, and they need to be educated about Islam and what Islam actually teaches. I asked Zahid what he thinks is the goal of the prevent strategy. They want Muslims to stop holding views relating to politics and relating to uh, daily life. They want Muslims just to be people, some guy in the corner of the mosque praying, you know, you do your thing, don't get involved in politics, don't get involved in life, just do that. Allah. Jahangir Mohammed, who recently authored a report critical of the PREVENT program for CAGE, a London-based human rights group, said the PREVENT policy isn't merely the outreach program that it claims to be. In reality, it's something totally different. It's been widely reported uh, as a policy that uh, effectively uh, gathers information uh, on the Muslim community, their views, their beliefs, their activities. Ironically, they may be radicalizing more people through PREVENT than actually preventing the radicalization because if you're going through each stage of life through the PREVENT policy and you believe you're being spied on, uh, then eventually you have no loyalty to that state. You will start to believe that uh, the British state is, is, uh, is against Islam and Muslims uh, and that creates the very problem that they, they, they say that they're trying to solve. Prevent officials say their aim is not to criminalize British Muslims. However, the number of Muslims in British prisons has more than doubled since 2002. Prevent insists that the program aims to engage British Muslims rather than alienate them. But that isn't happening. As most in this community will say, it's yet another attempt to scrutinize every aspect of their lives. Matthew Castle, Al Jazeera, Birmingham.